Jane, you're not in this movie for the first section, for the first, but then you just come in and have a barn burner of a scene. I have a good what, scene. <laughs> what was it like when you first read the script? Uh, well, I agreed to do the movie before I read the script because I wanted to work with Paolo Sorrentino. Um, I had seen the movie that he won an Academy Award for, Great Beauty. I had seen Il Devo. The man is unique as a talent. Um, you know, he's in the world of Fellini and Antonioni in terms of, you know, he writes his own material. He uses music in, ex in an extraordinary way. And there's a surreal quality to his films that's very unusual. And I have never worked with a director like that. So I agreed to do it, and then I read the, script, the, the scene, and I thought, well, this is pretty cool. But he knew exactly what he wanted. We had some phone conversations. He sent me photographs of how he wanted me to look in terms of the wig and, you know, everything, how I dressed, how I looked, the color of my face, um, and all of that was something that he had in his head. I was just thrilled when I finally, I had done my fittings and my wig was made and I was all made up and I was presented to him the day before we shot and he looked at me and he said, this is exactly what my vision was for the character. Well, the movie is all about vision and style and it's so artistic. Uh, when you saw, saw the final product, what did you think? It's a work of art. It really is. It's very personal. And I completely agree with what I think the movie is about, which I'm not sure that it's how Paolo describes the movie. But to me, youth is about how aging is really not so chronological as it is spiritual, as it is energetically. If you have retained your passion you can be old, but you'll still be young. Michael Caine's character is older than Harvey Keitel, but from one of the very first times we see him, he's sitting in his chair in his hand, he has a candy wrapper, and he's keeping, he's, it's the tempo of the song that he wrote for his wife to sing. When he goes to a field and sees cows, it becomes a symphony. He still got that passion in his DNA. Harvey Keitel, the producer, Mick, it's gone. Mm -hmm. My character, Brenda, who's made 15 films with him, she knows it's, it's gone. He has a team of writers working with him and he can't come up with an ending. You've had Emmy nominations lately, but it's been a while since you've been nominated at the Oscars, although you've had seven nominations and two wins. What would it be like to be welcomed back by that group if you get a nomination this year? Oh my God, it would, it would be a, a fantastic, it would be fantastic. I mean, you can't get blasé about that. It's a big deal. You've had two wins. There's only six people in history that have, uh, uh, actors or actresses that have gotten three. Uh, what, just to join that illustrious group, how would, how would that make you feel? I have to think of what Katherine Hepburn said to me when I called her the morning after she won the Oscar for Best Actor for On Golden Pond, which I produced with my partner, Bruce Gilbert. She said, you'll never catch me now. And it took me a second to understand what she was talking about. I had won two, she had won three. If I had won one and she hadn't, we'd be tied. Mm -hmm. Now she had four and I only had two, only, I had two. You'll never catch me now. If I ever, I mean, if, you know, if, if I w won something, I'd say to her, K K Ms. Hepburn, because I always called her Ms. Hepburn, I'm snapping at your heels. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much today. It was a great movie. I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. Thank you.